Today, I'm going to give you some insights, both professional and personal, into one of the greatest and most remarkable journeys of scientific discovery. On the 11th of February last year, the 1,000-strong International Collaboration of Scientists and Engineers, of which I am a member, called LIGO and Virgo, announced the first ever direct detection of gravitational waves on Earth. This scientific achievement ranks right up at the top of the pile in the annals of human scientific endeavor. But how did this story begin, and what does it all mean? Well, the story began with a very bright spark in the form of Albert Einstein, when he delivered his miraculous theory of general relativity to the world in 1915. This theory is a precise description of the symbiotic relationship between matter in the universe, such as stars and galaxies, and, <coughs> excuse me, and the space surrounding it. Matter warps space-time, or as we say, it curves space-time. And it is this curvature which we perceive as gravity. Einstein's theory of general relativity correctly predicted observable physical processes in the universe, such as the motions of the planets and the bending of lights from distant stars and galaxies. It also led to powerful predictions of the existence of new exotic objects called black holes and a completely new type of radiation carried by gravitational waves. Well, let's start with black holes. These are strange places in the universe with such strong gravitational pull that nothing, including particles and light, can escape from inside them. And thus the name black because they do not shine like a normal star. The surprising thing is that general relativity theorists predicted their existence well in advance of when the first strong candidate for a black hole Cygnus X1 was identified in 1972. Nowadays, black holes feature prominently in almost every new motion picture about space. The public, such as your good self, simply can't get enough of them. But the same is true for me. I've had a lifelong love affair with black holes. They form a really important part of my research work. And in fact, I am a mathematical physicist which means that my research is motivated by trying to understand problems in physics and devising theories in physics, and I use a wide range of mathematical tools in order to do this. Now, black holes are really beautiful because at one level, they are so simple and elegant. They're characterized by simply their mass and the rate at which they spin. They don't come in different shapes like stars and planets, and it is their high level of symmetry which sets them apart in a universe full of irregularity and disorder. But at the same time, they are very mysterious. They are cloaked by what we call an event horizon, which is a one-way one membrane, and once something passes through that event horizon, it is lost to the rest of the universe. We are still searching for a theory of quantum gravity to explain what really happens at the center of a black hole, which is a region of infinite density. The second main ingredient in this story is the fact that in 1916, Einstein showed that the field equations for his newly created theory of general relativity led to the predic prediction of a completely new type of radiation called gravitational waves. Now, according to the theory, these will be produced whenever we have accelerating masses, and they travel outwards from their source at the speed of light. But the difficulty is that space-time is very, very stiff. We think of steel as being very stiff, but space-time is approximately 22 orders of magnitude stiffer than steel. That's 10 by 10 by 10 22 times. 
This means that most accelerating masses won't dent space-time very much at all. And so the gravitational waves produced will be so small that we would not have any hope of ever detecting them. Einstein had done the calculations. He believed that we would probably never be able to detect them. In the last 100 years, however, there have been amazing developments in science and technology. In 1974, Hulse and Taylor discovered the first binary pulsar system. Now, a pulsar is a radiating neutron star, and this system had two of them orbiting one another. Their observations showed that the orbit of the pulsars is gradually contracting by an amount which corresponds precisely to the amount predicted to be emitted by gravitational waves by this system. This achievement earned them the 1993 Nobel Prize for Physics. With this very direct evidence for the existence of gravitational waves, coupled with the amazing uh, developments in science and technology in the preceding decades, the time was ripe in 1989 to put a proposal to the United States National Science Foundation to fund a large-scale project to directly detect gravitational waves on Earth using laser interferometry. The proposal was successful, and the construction of two gravitational wave detectors commenced in 1994 in Hanford, Washington State, and Livingston, Louisiana. Each arm of the, of the detectors is an ultra-high vacuum. The idea is that from the center of the L, we shine a laser beam simultaneously down both arms of the detectors. This beam is then reflected from large mirrors which are stationed at the end of each arm. If a sufficiently large gravitational wave passes through the detector, it will alternately stretch one arm of the interferometer and then stretch the other arm. This is then apparent by the different travel time which the beam takes to traverse each arm and return to the center of the interferometer. Now, this may sound very easy, but a passing gravitational wave is expected to only change the length of each arm of the interferometer by 10 to the minus 18 meters. Now, that's just one thousandth of the width of a proton. This was an extraordinary technological challenge to create an instrument with such exquisite sensitivity, and it took our collaboration of a thousand people more than 20 years to achieve it. Meanwhile, the general relativity theorists were very hard at work during all these years. We needed to predict what the gravitational wave signals would look like from astrophysical and cosmic events that were expected to be strong sources of gravitational waves. So that once our detectors became sensitive enough, we could look for these signals in the collected data. The focus was on binary systems in spiraling of either two neutron stars or one neutron star and one black hole or two black holes. These systems have very large masses orbiting very close to one another and accelerating during the in-spiral to appreciable fractions of the speed of light. And so there are very large amounts of momentum involved in these systems. These mergers were expected to be one of the most powerful known sources of gravitational waves in the universe. In order to find the complete signal for these events, and you can see the signal on the screen there, required us to solve the full Einstein field equations. And this involved many years of innovative theoretical and numerical code development. By Monday, the 14th of September, 2015, we were just four days from the end of the final engineering run and the commencement of the first ever observing run of Advanced LIGO. That night, I was at home in Canberra working on my computer. And well into the evening, I received a text 
from my daughter saying, Australia has a new Prime Minister. And that was, is, Malcolm Turnbull. That news was still sinking in when, a few minutes later, I received an email from within the collaboration saying, there has been a very interesting event in the, in the LIGO detectors in the, in the last hour. <laughs> so, from that moment, it felt to me like time was slowing down. <clears throat> Thoughts of the revolving door of Australian Prime Ministers rapidly receded, and I became glued to the email thread that was unfolding. We were in unknown territory with this possibility of a real signal having snuck its way into our detectors when we were almost not quite ready. Although it would take months of checking the data before we could announce the first ever detection of a gravitational wave, it became clear pretty quickly to those involved that this was the real deal. The detection event was gravitational waves from the in-spiral of a binary system of two very large black holes, 36 and 29 times the mass of the Sun, located about 1.3 billion light years from Earth. Th these two black holes were whizzing around each other at about half the speed of light, getting closer and closer in a death spiral dance as they radiated energy in gravitational waves, until finally their event horizons touched and they formed a single larger black hole. By now it was very late at night, and with decent certainty that this was actually the real deal, I realized that I had an overwhelming desire to tell someone the news. I wanted to text my daughters, I wanted to call my mum, and I wanted to run outside with a loudspeaker and tell the whole neighborhood. But in the back of my mind, there was this little nagging voice reminding me that all discoveries were to remain strictly confidential within the collaboration until the time of official announcement. So there could be no telling family, friends, the press, or anyone else outside of our enclave of a thousand scientists. Well, I thought if I can't tell someone outside of the collaboration, I can at least tell someone who is in it. At that stage, only the subgroup of people on the email thread were actually aware of the discovery. So I promptly sent off an email to a colleague at the Australian National Uni University, who is also in the collaboration. But of course, by now, it was so late at night that he was already asleep and would not see the message until the following day. Resigned to the fact that there was no way I could share this information with anyone else, I decided to go to bed. <laughs> I recall feeling just like I did when I was a young child going to bed on Christmas Eve. My excitement was palpable, my mind was racing, and, of course, I hardly slept at all, uh, eventually lapsi lapsing into tortured half-dreams of a multitude of pairs of black holes twisting up the universe as they spiralled together. What followed was five months of frenzied activity within the collaboration, carefully checking the data, refining the physical parameters of the binary system that had caused the event, of course, writing the discovery paper and working out just how we were going to tell the rest of the world. But it was also five months of sworn secrecy. For the preceding 20 years, we had had to live with significant skepticism from within the scientific community. Doubters that gravitational waves actually exist, and doubters that we could overcome the enormous scientific and technological pro problems in order to detect them. 
But in spite of this, the collaboration never wavered. And we continued to work towards our goals slowly but surely with courage and determination. And then the day finally came to make the announcement. The Australian contingent of the collaboration held a press conference in Canberra at Parliament House on the 12th of February last year. And what an exciting day it was, with the international press and public clamouring to hear about the discovery. The collision of the two black holes had radi radiated the equivalent of three solar masses in gra gravitational waves. The rate of energy um, emission during the 0.1 second duration of the signal was 50 times that of all the stars in the observable universe. This was an extraordinary achievement, with LIGO measuring a change in the length of each arm of the interferometer, equivalent to measuring a change in the distance between here and Alpha Centauri of 10% of the thickness of a piece of paper. Einstein's theory of general relativity has triumphed, and two of its greatest predictions, black holes and gravitational waves, came together in this discovery. So now we have opened a new window on the universe with the dawn of the age of gravitational wave astronomy. From now on, we will be listening to the universe with gravitational waves, listening to black holes, pulsars, and listening back to almost the beginning of time at the start of the universe, which we cannot do with light. So these days, I wake up every morning with a smile on my face. And instead of wondering whether this will finally be the day that we detect gravitational waves, I wonder what new secret of our universe we will unlock today using gravitational waves. Thank you.